Hey, man. So we were talking about Slab City. Hey, man. I know. I was I was just jumping into it. I know what this one's about. Well, hey, man. Okay, what? <clears throat> Have you ever heard of Salt and Sea? Salt in the Sea? The Salt and Sea. Salt in the Salt and Sea. Sultan. Salt and Sea. I've heard that there's salt in the sea. No. The Salt and Sea. The salt. Are you saying S A L T? O N. Oh, Salt and Sea. Capital letter C. No, <laughs> like an ocean, like a sea, salt and yeah. sea. The salt and sea. Salt and sea. Okay, 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 okay. Salt and sea. Yeah. There's a body of water. Yeah, and it's it's a large, um, increasingly saline, 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 saline lake um, in the desert basin basin that we talked about called the Salton Trough. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in our last episode, uh, so in our last episode we talked a lot about Slab City, which is a city on the shore of the Salton Sea in this region. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And the Salton Sea uh, is uh, a Can massive. Can you swim in it? Well, uh, uh, okay. <clears throat> Probably so, shouldn't. Uh, oh, we'll get there. Okay. Uh, oh, that sounded like the Chiefs chant. <laughs> <laughs> he just dumped his water bottle on his head. I'm paying five thousand dollar rent <laughs> and smelling, <laughs> and then everybody back home is like, "Oh!" They loaded the real nuke into this plane, and it happened pretty regularly. Where they didn't just miss their target; they missed the sea. Straight up, that's made up. Things I learned last night. Tilling it, tilling it. Uh, so, so. This is a massive body of water. Okay, um, it, it is uh, uh, about forty feet deep. Um, it's about thirty-three miles long, thirteen miles wide. Oh, geez. Uh, covers a surface area of three hundred forty-three square miles. Oh, uh, it is like five times the size of Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, if you stand on one end of it, and for the majority of the lake, you can't see the other side. Uh, it is a massive, massive body of water, um, right in the middle of this desert in Southern California, about 50 miles from next Mexico, about 100 miles from or 100 miles east of San Diego can and about 150 southeast of LA. Yes, you can boat on it. Okay. Uh, there is pretty good boating uh, on the lake. What's interesting about this lake? <coughs> well, what isn't interesting about this lake is a better question. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Yeah, uh, so this started. Uh, this was this was a recommendation from someone on our Discord server uh, by the name of Christian Hobbit. Um, okay, that's his birth name. Uh, Christian, <laughs> Christian last, first name Christian, last name Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on our Discord, which is available to Patreon supporters. Yes, yes. Which, uh, if you text Tillin to six six eight six six, you can get access to that as well as uh, so much more great things. Yes. Um, but uh, this was a recommendation from him to cover Slab City or Salton Sea, um, and I looked into Slab City and I thought it was interesting uh, so and we did would an make a good on. episode. So we did an episode on it. That was <laughs> the last episode. Check it out. Um, but when I dove into the Salton Sea, uh, my mind was blown. <laughs> uh, okay. And and as I peeled back the layers of this onion of this metaphorical uh, <laughs> body of water onion, uh, liquid onion, if you will. Uh, <laughs> It just completely. It's actually that's a seasoning re- that they sell at the store. <laughs> it's just onion. liquid onion. <laughs> <laughs> liquefied onion. It's the consistency of Tabasco it's like sauce. Lime juice. It's like lime juice. <laughs> it's just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> For when you're making chili. Yeah, you just pour you know? some onion in just there. Pour some liquid onion <laughs> in there. It's also, and this is true, part of a lot of home remedies. Yep. yep you yep. know, drink some liquid onion. You I feel weird. You soak your socks in liquid onion. Every <laughs> <night>. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. uh as I peeled out the layers, Alex told us that he's got to get out of here soon, and that's why Tim is talking so fast. Just so y'all know, I'm talking so fast because I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> okay, we've done a lot of episodes today, and I've been waiting for this one. Uh, I've been wait- <laughs> waiting for it. Um, so uh, uh, it just gets more and more crazy as you go down the storyline. Yeah. So we'll start from the top. Um, scientists believe that this has been here for a long time. Uh, uh, not the Salton Sea. But the area. So this giant trough, I said it was lower than sea level, right? Um, well, that's because they believe that this was once a part of um, the the Great Gulf flood. of California. <laughs> <laughs> the flood of Noah. <laughs> no, I was with you. <laughs> I got it. So the Gulf of California, you know where Baja they thought Mexico this was is? part of the Gulf of California. 
Yeah, you know where Baja California is and you know Mexico. Yes, uh, in between that is the Gulf of California. Well, they thought it went up much further in through where this desert was. Okay, at one point at one point it dried up and is now a desert and that's why it's below sea level. So it, it kind of like sunk, you know, like like that thing where like there's a yeah, you know curve um, and over the course of the last uh, roughly 1300 years. Uh, they believe that there was four different lakes in this region that had spawned and dried up. Um, so over winter or wetter, more moist climates. <laughs> uh, there was periods of hundreds of years where it was raining more yeah. and so it filled with water and then it dried up and that water that lake dried up um, at one point. They think in 1700 it got its deepest uh, uh, depth uh, where it covered up to the mountain ranges on either side. The whole region is surrounded by mountain ranges um, uh, like about 8000 square miles worth. Um, and so they they think that was all filled. <clears throat> they think it was all filled and the reason they believe that is from fossil record and also archaeological record of native villages along what they think was the shoreline uh, that have tons of fish bones in the village. Um, so oh. they think that that was their main source of um, they fished in the sea. They fished in the sea. Yeah, okay, um, and they think it they based on and now it's only 40 feet deep. Now it's only 40 feet deep. Well, here's the thing um, in the 1900s. Uh, there was nothing there. It was completely dry uh, a completely dry yeah. desert bed. Uh, in fact, there was a town that in the center of the bed called the Sultan Sultan town um, and they had a Sultan there was railroad that okay. went through uh, this desert yeah. in 1900 capitalism hit uh, <laughs> You know when capitalism, hit, you know hit. when <laughs> capitalism came down. <laughs> capitalism hit, and uh, somebody somewhere was like, you know, this is a lot of land, and I bet we could farm it, but it's a desert, so we got to make it fertile. And I said, you know what's nearby? The Colorado River. They said, what if we route the Colorado River, reroute it through this desert uh, to make this fertile, so we could farm this land. Uh, and so they bought up a giant swaths of the desert. And they rerouted the Colorado River down into this desert and started building these canals to stretch through the whole desert so that way they could feed all these farms that they were getting ready to plant in. Yeah. Well, in 1903, uh, there was a uh, record breaking precipitation level uh, that flooded the Colorado River and it and burst then- these canals um, and it got quickly got out of control to the point where there was an 80 foot waterfall. Uh, into the Salton trough, which was this giant uh, valley that was yeah. like the 200 uh, feet below sea level. Uh, it became such a problem that they worked for two years nonstop trying to patch this this flooding um, before they were able to dam up the flow. Um, by that point, uh, it was far too late <laughs> and they had filled this uh, 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 water volume with what uh, came up to 16, 6 million acres per foot of water rushed into this valley over the course of two years, turning it into a massive lake uh, man made by accident uh, flooded all the towns in the area. I was going to say so all the those, railroad. All those towns are <clears throat> in that water. Yeah, they're underwater um, and it was a slow thing. It took two years. Yeah, so they were still, able to say got out, but yeah, I mean, they like, were able to say we probably should go now. There's, maybe, there's probably someone down there. Though. <laughs> it was like I'm staying. There's probably somebody Don't fix like, this. Hey, no. Nah. I left my family to move out here. Okay, me and my RV are staying <laughs> and then now they're at the bottom of that lake. Yeah, uh, what's significant about this lake is uh, after they finished uh, damming up that 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 uh, that flow in spot. Yeah, they continued their work to send the the uh, uh, canals through the region uh, so they could start some farms. And they finished. They were like, "Well, the water's here." <laughs> yeah, so they finished it. Uh, happy accident. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, so they started all these farms. Okay. Um, and what happened was there was a little bit of a runoff feed. They made a smaller canal that fed the Salton Sea of runoff from the mountains. Right. Um, but then um, they had a series of canals that came from the Colorado River to the canals, and then would go to these farms. The farms would siphon out the water to right. feed their crops and then their runoff would go back into those canals and then the runoff would go into the sea. The issue was the sea didn't have an out yeah. fill. So like it's just it all just, runoff water. It was all runoff water and it and what happened was uh, it slowly transformed from a freshwater lake to a salt water lake or sea. Got it. Um, okay, and so it became a salty <clears throat> body of water pretty quickly. 
Um, and, uh, 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 the so much so uh, that like what was what's wild is that runoff was coming from these from up in the minerals up in the mountains. So the yeah. salt salt and then uh, like I said before this used to be part of the ocean. So a lot of the the desert floor in this was the levels underneath it were full of salt from when it was right, ocean. So right, the right. salt is kind of flowing back through it and it ended up becoming this this salt body of water. Well in uh, 37. Uh, I had mentioned in our last episode that there was a military base that was in the region. Right. Uh, and so there's actually an Air Force, a Army, um, and a Navy military base in these regions. Um, and they'd used, they used the Salton Sea for a lot of like water based uh, training activities. Okay. <laughs> activities. Uh, <laughs> activities. It's time for our activities. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody! Hey, hey cadets! <laughs> Today we have uh, uh, marine exfil uh, uh, exercises. We have landing on uh, an aircraft carrier, and then we got the blob. Uh, pick what you want for a wreck. <laughs> We're gonna take a vote in the calf. Yep. If you guys want to <laughs> pick what you want to do today, see your camp counselor to sign up for. <laughs> see. <laughs> okay. okay. You're the same energy as these these girls that go to the beach. All right. And if I swear, if I see another Instagram caption that's like, see you later, I'm gonna go to Instagram and shut it down. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna down go to the Instagram. headquarters. Of, I'm gonna, listen, I know, know that not all gone. I know not all the posts are this, but some yeah. of them are, and that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Uh so so the government took advantage of this. They said this is a a, a salt water body of water inside our own continental United States. Mm. We can use this to practice. Um, it quickly <laughs> became a place where they tested bombs, but not like <laughs> not. Here's the we thing. can use this to practice. <laughs> oh, we know what that means. All right, we'll we'll move. Here's That's the all right. Yeah, <laughs> here's no, the I thing about it. here's the thing about testing bombs. This wasn't where they tested bombs that they like were blowing up. This is where they tested like dropping bombs like they were like we need right. to practice dropping bombs. So th these weren't live bombs. They were bomb shells that they filled with concrete or uh, just left empty like hollow bombs. Um, and they would fly over this lake. Hollow bombs was my band in high school. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna make a graphic T hollow bombs. For my band, hollow Which bombs. A bunch of bombs. Yeah, that's a funny. C and like a little bomb yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah, hollow bombs. That's hollow great. Bombs. Uh, so um, they would put these floating targets in the lake, and they would have uh, the bombers fly over and try to do like doing target practice, trying yeah. to hit that target. Um, and it was significant because uh, uh, obviously that's not an easy thing to do to fly over something and try to hit it with a, a bomb from altitude um, and it happened uh, pretty regularly where they didn't just miss their target. They missed the sea <laughs> and they hit the land outside the sea um, on a couple occasions coming very close to there was a lot of towns that were in that region and coming very close to like hitting towns like people in the town. You're just chilling. Yeah, you know you're <laughs> outside just you know whatever you do in the Desert, and then you don't hear it. It's not a like cartoon, Tim. Yeah, you do. Do you hear them? Yeah, you absolutely you, do. They like whistle. You think you hear? Yeah, they like whistle. They really do. A concrete it's, it's, bomb. It's the way they're. It's their aerodynamics. So you sound like a cartoon character. Isn't it? It's the aerodynamics. So you're saying <sighs> you're just sitting there, and then like and it doesn't detonate. Obliterated a whole <laughs> like. <laughs> But there's no City explosion. Block. There's no explosion. Uh, yeah, they said that they. But it hits one house. <laughs> you know, it just puts a massive hole in the ground. You got to start to think like if you're if you moved out there to get away from whatever life you <laughs> left, right? And then a gigantic. I mean, there's there's throwing bricks through windows, and then there's concrete bombs. Hey, thanks for being here. We've got merchandise. It's a way to support the show and help us do more stuff, buy new equipment, reach more people. Uh, if you like what we're doing and want to help us do that more, uh, please consider doing that. If you want to link to that, all of that's going to be sent to you if you just text Tillin to 66866. I'll tell you, it's not a thing where we're going to text you a lot. We're not. It's not a text service. We're not going to like send you more of the money. It's just a way for you to get a link. Uh, it's one text. That's all we're going to send. I promise you. Uh, yeah, so um, there's multiple reports of these things falling out of the sky in towns, and then quickly bulldozers come uh, to where that is, clean it up the mess, and then just leave. Um, and so, uh, what was uh, really significant about this era was in World War II, uh, 
Uh, this is where the pilots who dropped the fat man and little boy bombs yeah, were trained. trained. Yeah, uh, and so they literally dropped replica nukes in this lake. Um, and it was it was a significant thing because they learned while they were doing this that they couldn't um, fly at altitude high enough to escape the blast. So what they had to do is they had to come and drop it and do this crazy U turn U turn maneuver to escape the blast. Uh, so they were practicing that maneuver um, uh, wow. uh, here at the Salton Sea um, dropping these giant concrete bombs. Well, after the war, uh, this was still used for this purpose because the Cold War happened and people were stressed about nukes uh, for a while. Yeah, uh, not so much anymore, but I mean a little bit. If you think about it, it'll stress you out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that America made the nuclear bombs and then they were like, all right, guys, no one's allowed to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, everybody stop. <laughs> Everybody yeah. stop. It's like whenever you're playing tag and you've been it for like 15 <laughs> minutes and you finally tag someone you're like, okay, I got to go home. I got to see you guys. Pause, 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 <laughs> pause. <laughs> I said pause. You can't tag. I said me. pause. You can't tag me. Stop. It doesn't. We count. all got to stop. I said pause. And you're like, that's not the okay. <laughs> that, that was pretty well what the US did there actually. Yeah, um, so uh, in the in the Cold War era, they had developed a bomb uh, that was 16 equivalent to 16 megatons of TNT, which you might remember if you listen to our Castle Bravo um, episode that Castle Bravo was 15 megatons, which right. was ridiculously huge right. um, and created a lot of problems. Um, uh, this was 16 megatons and somebody made a mistake with this home. one. Um, somebody uh, when they were planning for the practice round, they had the concrete version and for some reason they stored the real version right next to it <laughs> and they no loaded way. the real Shut nuke. Up. They loaded the real nuke into this plane. That sounds like that is again what happens in a TV show. <laughs> that's straight up. That's made up where like they set like they set something down on the table and then the other person grabs the other grabs one by it. accident and, yeah. and like everyone watching at home is like, oh no, he no. got the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's and you exactly know that like happened. they go into this big warehouse with their fake bo- and they're like, why didn't we just <laughs> is there nothing we we could have spray painted the word real. <laughs> it's so easy to identify. It's so easy to go. This is not that one. This is not. Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't do that and so they loaded the real bomb in this plane to go do its practice run. Um, uh, what was convenient uh, or maybe convenient is not the right word. But the good thing is uh, luckily this had a double safety and so the double safety was um, that before it was dropped someone had to manually insert like the ignition system into the bomb. Okay, still full of explosives like right. still full of radioactive material and explosive. It just couldn't detonate, uh, but they dropped it into the salt and sea uh, and then they noticed they said that was the real bomb. <laughs> <laughs> they dr- How do they notice though? They went back and they were like, oh, oh. shoot. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know exactly how they noticed, but they noticed. Uh, so a uh, massive Captain, search um, on the real one. I um, <clears throat> I'm embarrassed <clears throat> to say this. I <throat> spray painted a little heart <laughs> with my first initial <laughs> and um, my crush's first initial on it, and I'm just saying that this doesn't have the this heart. Doesn't have the <laughs> I I I like to think that they went. They took it to the Nevada test range. And they did it go off and they were like, no, and then it, one was, guy's but like it was empty. It <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> it fell apart. And then the other guy was like Sultan Sultan. Uh, <laughs> they watched it out and they were like, okay, and they had all the big wigs around. They were like, here's our new bot. You gotta love you guys it. are going to love this. You're gonna love it. You remember Castle Bravo. Oh, way big. Get ready to see your bones. All right, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure you like, you know, take a glance Close those eyes. Oh man. Okay, here we go. <laughs> You watch it. You ready? Don't look away. Don't look away. Put your phone away. All right, guys. Um, I swear it's gonna go off. Just give it a second. Just any moment. Just <laughs> <laughs> somebody hand me a phone, please. <laughs> I need to make a phone call. <laughs> Germany can never know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Germany. Don't don't tell Russia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so so uh, uh, oh, a massive. So do they search, go? Do they go get it? A massive search went underway to it's find only this 40 bomb. Feet deep. That's <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> a massive search. Here's the thing: we have declassified documents detailing the search. We have no declassified document saying they ever found it. Oh my gosh! They won't say 
but it's pretty clear that there is a live nuclear bomb at the bottom of the sea. Well, not necessarily live. The safety's not in it, but I mean, it's a nuclear bomb just sitting at the bottom of the sea. Um, and this <clears throat> was a, a 16 megaton bomb. So if it were to accidentally detonate, I mean, it, it probably would just do a ton of damage in this area, but also it's only a hundred miles outside of LA and uh, uh, San Diego. Uh, and it's not far from Vegas or Phoenix. So the fallout would greatly affect all of those major cities um, greatly. So and those are the only things that matter. <laughs> who cares about anybody who lives in between? <laughs> but man, if it got to LA, that's a problem. You know, so many people live out in the desert, but they take the risk. Okay, they know what they're it would greatly into. impact. They know Vegas. what they're getting into. <laughs> I'll tell you who you know who would notice. You know who would notice. Who would notice? Tunnel Town. Tunnel All right, Town. they would know. They wouldn't notice. They would survive. They're underground. They would. They just would go. come out and rebuild. <laughs> They'd be sitting there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tell Germany. <laughs> I think it happened. I think they did it. So it's just sitting at the bottom <laughs> of the sea. Sitting at the bottom of the sea. And what's significant about this is. Um, remember how I told you there's like just a steady flow of runoff coming into the sea and no way for it to go anywhere else. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, a couple things are happening with this one. Uh, is the is, water radioactive then it? Well, uh, it's consistently becoming more and more Pretty salty. Crazy. You know at night. I mean though, it's just glowing green. It just glows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla comes out every night of the water. Um, that was a detail you didn't <laughs> you just left out. <laughs> no, uh, so uh, um, the 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 salt content is significantly increasing. So when uh, when it first became salty, obviously it was just a couple uh, like points of a percent. Uh, today it's at five point two percent saltiness, oh, wow. which five point five is the point where most biologists say nothing can survive in the Got the it. water. So it's it's getting very what close. What percentage to that. is the ocean? Um, I don't know, like two or three. I don't know. It's really not much. You guessed. I hate you. Just like I don't know, two or three. I don't know. Let's find out. Three point five. Okay, it's close. It's called an educated guess. No big deal. Um, so, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. <I'll tell> you <laughs> <what>. <laughs> Are you just dumped his water bottle on his head. <laughs> It felt like the only way to respond to that. It felt, like, it felt like the thing that you just said made me so mad that I it made me so angry that I had to physically respond. Dump water on my. Do you do the towel or? And I evaporate. Just do the, yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> Uh, ironically, anyway, it's ironic let's that cut that, that out and pretend it didn't happen. Soggy head. People are just like, what is going <laughs> what on? What happened? Yeah, I just got a wet head. Uh, so here's the thing. It's ironic you it said cut that. Cut to me. It's dripping down my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I just got like, a sweat pit in the middle. <laughs> hey, I just got a sweaty chest. <laughs> just sweat. It's hot. It's summer. It's summer, man. Summer vibes. Uh, okay. So uh, it's ironic you said that though, because that was the original solution. Was when this happened, the engineers were like, "It'll dry up. It's the desert, um, <laughs> like the lake, the giant sea that they just created." Like, oh, it'll dry up. It's it'll the evaporate. Desert. It didn't. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so the the uh, it got saltier and saltier and saltier. Right. Part of that runoff was the fertilizer from the farms. <laughs> uh, the unintended con consequence of this was that it fertilized the lakes, which birthed giant algae blooms uh, in the lake Interesting. and also okay. it's just full of fertilizer, which is not good, right? Um, <clears throat> so some people have this theory that the salt and the fertilizer is is eating away at the bomb and maybe the other bombs because they there's theories that there's probably more than one time that this happened with how easy it was <laughs> for them to do this with one nuke. <laughs> For them to do what this once every what if here's the other thing. What if when they went and dropped those bombs in like Japan, <laughs> they, they dropped <laughs> just gigantic the bricks people. Are, I mean like the <laughs> sirens are going people are like oh my gosh and then it just <laughs> <laughs> 
No, how anticlimactic <laughs> is that? And then like, and then everybody back home is like, oh, they like check the, the hearts on the one in the in the store. It's like, no, <clears throat> yeah, that's rough. I'll tell you those didn't blow up, but I'm about to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, so, so some people theorize that the uh, the outer casing of this bomb has been decayed eroded, away, right? Uh, and the radioactive material has been leaking into. That's what the I lake. was thinking. Yeah, um, which there's merit to it because all on the shore. If you take a Geiger counter, there's above average radiation levels. Um, it's not enough exposure for it to hurt you now, but there's another way it can get you, which we'll get to in a second. Did you think that's what they were picking up whenever they're at the bottom of Salvation Mountain? They were like, "This is toxic ground." <laughs> actually, yeah, they're actually that might be accurate. I didn't think about that, but could be. Uh, and no one else was like, Nuh-uh. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It just depends on who you ask. Yeah. Honestly, with the most government things, with the most government things. did that one. Yeah, the yeah, Navy did the second one and they're like, no, yeah, it's fine. It's not toxic. No, 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 no. No, nothing toxic here. Everything's yeah. safe. Uh, so because uh, the Navy is not the government. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing uh, in the 50s uh, while the testing was still happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, somebody uh, an investor if you will because that's what they were saw an opportunity <laughs> here in the Salton Sea. They okay. said, hey, look, here's a giant empty piece of land pretty close to Palm Springs. That's doing great. All right, uh, and they said, but this one has an ocean like a literal ocean. You can't see the other side. It's salt water. It's beautiful blue water. It's great to swim in. There's not much of a current um, so you can boat in it really easy and he said opportunity Knox. So he built a resort and a golf course and a yacht club and then a couple other guys said, hey, I'm going to do that too and this sea just got lined with tourist traps. Oh no, and it was a desert already too. So it, the whole shore this 33 mile long lake all the shores are already beautiful pristine beaches like ready made for right. tourists and so <clears throat> it became the tourist destinations of tourist destinations the 50s and 60s. This is where um, local Californians went for vacation because they were like we're not going to go to the beach here because we live there. Yeah. So they went out to the Salton Sea. I want to go to a different beach. I want to go to another I'm beach. I'm tired of this beach. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it became a massive tourist destination. They built a, a theater and out like what well, uh, an outdoor theater an amphitheater if you will um, that is what they <clears throat> uh, and the Beatles came uh, Nat King Cole came like big name artists. They were bringing through uh, and they made this a they made this the spot. Uh, wow, and it was for years uh, even so much so that um, a few of the investors pulled together and they dumped a ton of fish into this lake so much fish <laughs> so much fish that it became a world renowned fishing spot uh, and the rumor had it that you didn't even need bait. You could cast a baitless hook and catch a fish because it was just flooded because they're magnetic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, you just throw a hook in there, and those fish are magnetic. They just stick to yeah, your. It's you, the it, radioactive. They never even. Yeah, you really gonna pull them apart. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, you're like oh, whoa, 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 and there were so many fish that the fish attracted all these different birds from all around the region, the mountains, and on the other side of the mountains, the sea. And so there's just seagulls and birds, and it also became a world renowned bird watching spot. And so now you have tourists trying to find a beach and then you have fishermen and bird watchers traveling from literally around the world to come to this salt and sea uh, for one of those three things uh, and to enjoy a a fabulous vacation. Wow, you could I mean you could do the whole family, you know, dads into fishing mom's into bird watching and kids are into sneaking off and running around in the dropping bombs. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you got the older brother who's like I'm gonna find this bomb. Did people like dive in this? Die or dive? Dive. Like did they did like people scuba like, diving? Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess I I that. guess I imagine if people are swimming in it. That's yeah, what that's what I was kind of curious about the whole time was are people like people were swimming in it this whole time. Um I don't know if anybody was scuba diving, but I would assume like it was a storage strap. If people were scuba diving anywhere else, they probably were scuba diving here, you know? Yeah. Um that's what this place was. It was a tourist trap. Hey, just popping in again to say, are you tired of advertisements? Are you tired of us not talking about the subject that you clicked the link to listen to? Uh, well, great news for you. Patreon doesn't have any of our advertisements, doesn't have us t- pitching our merchandise or a Patreon. Obviously, you're already there, but it also doesn't have YouTube ads or anything else. So sign up for Patreon and you'll hear less commercial breaks. Our goal really is to break you with breaks. Thank you. Patreon.com slash Jaron Myers, Tillon.com slash join. Well, 
Remember when I said it was getting saltier and saltier and saltier? Yes. Uh, so starting in the 70s, uh, there began to be these massive die offs of uh, tourists. Uh, no. Uh, of <laughs> the, so the percentage you gave the 5.2% or whatever. That's today. That's today. That's okay, today. That's what yeah. I and so when it started, it was obviously like decimal percentages. Right. Um, over time, it got worse and worse. Uh, and so in uh, uh, the 70s, there began being these massive die off events where uh, massive populations of fish would die and then wash up on shore. Uh, and so the shores would be lined with fish uh, in the 80s. There was a very significant one where an entire species of fish in the lake was killed off by a disease that ravaged them out. Uh, and it also killed off a ton of birds who were eating those fish that were diseased and they would die in the water and they would all wash up on the beach. It was so significant <clears throat> that Jeez. someone who worked in the area said that they had an incinerator burning carcasses 24 hours a day for three weeks uh, to clean up the <laughs> The dead Imagine you just have the beach for a family trip, yeah. right? And then just fish after fish <laughs> after fish is just washing up. Literal piles of carkai. Carkai? I hate that. <laughs> Jeez, look at all these carkai. And it, and so so the decline of marine life was catastrophic. These algae blooms got larger and larger because the fertilizer right. just kept feeding them. Uh, and so uh, uh, it became this thing where uh, all the marine life was dead uh, and the, the salt levels of it started getting so significant that the the water itself began to smell like rotten eggs uh, and the fish were dead. And so you had dead fish and rotten eggs was it was the smell of this whole sea. They put that and on the pamphlet maybe too. <laughs> dead fish and rotten eggs yeah. <laughs> uh, and and then nuclear radiation on top of that, right? Possible uh, nuclear, possible yeah. nuclear radiation. Um, and in the eighties, uh, the kind of nail in the coffin for it was there was this rerouting of a lot of the water that flowed through those canals to San Diego and Los Angeles because they needed more water. Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of those farms went out of business because they couldn't um, feed their farms anymore, uh, which decreased the runoff, which was sustaining the lake at its current level. So then it went so down. so it started to recede because it was evaporating. How deep was it then? Um, I don't know how deep it was then, but I do know that estimates right now say that so it's, it's 330 square miles right right now. Yeah, 300 343 square miles. Uh, it's estimated by 2040 uh, to have lost 75 square miles in uh, Jeez. water mass because the the uh, evaporation the evaporation all of the I mean I guess you <laughs> kind of hope that in the next 40 years it evaporates all the way. Maybe one of these little bombs will stick out. Uh, here's the problem with that. Um, so all of the sand that was below so there's, it, it, it's it's oh. back about 14 or 15 feet It's far enough maybe even further in some areas because far enough where the yacht clubs and the docks all of those are completely above ground now. They're not above water at all anymore. Um, so the shoreline is way out there. Um, okay, uh, and here's the problem with this is the water that the the what used to be the sea floor is uh, heavily contaminated with um, really high salt levels radiation uh, the algae blooms uh, and the whatever the dead fish were dying of and then all sorts of other mineral deposits and things like that. Now that it's not underwater wind comes through and creates these dust storms that are kicking these things up and blowing them across the whole region. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> and spreading all of the contaminants that are within that everywhere. Region. Uh, so people in the area, um, pretty much everybody who lives in this entire basin has asthma um, and they think it's a direct correlation to that effect um, and it's become such an issue uh, that in 2012 there was a big enough dust storm that blew over the mountains and into LA and in LA they were uh, people could smell the dead fish and the rotten egg smell in LA in 2012 uh, after that storm uh, and geologists believe that if this continues to recede those events will be more and more common and people in San Diego and LA will experience that pretty regularly uh, with these storms <laughs> that Ugh. blow those dust storms over the mountains. I'm paying five thousand dollar <laughs> rent and smelling <laughs> Dead fish in yeah. rotten eggs. Yeah, that's contaminated. Like, like a health risk. Yeah, who cares about the health risk? <laughs> it's more about like the, the, my, the smell. Yeah, yeah, it smells. It's bad. It's stinky. Uh, it's stinky. <laughs> it's stinky. Uh, uh, so, so it's becoming a a, a very uh, environmentally big issue. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and, and there's not a lot of uh, uh, ways to fix the problem. Right. Obviously, it's it's uh, even if you do find the bomb and remove it, like it's yeah, it it's solve the yeah. damage has been done. Yeah, it's far beyond repair at this. What point. happened to those resorts? Are those still out there? They are all uh, like ghost towns, so yeah. tourists stopped coming. So there's massive ghost towns, and so these are also squatter type villages. Because 70s resorts were like ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and there, so. Uh, uh, those have become like squatter towns as well. So yeah. you have Slab City as like one of the more famous ones, but this whole uh, uh, region is like just dotted with these uh, squatter villages of old, what used to be resort towns that are now places where um, the downtrodden and, and uh, homeless populations end up just kind of squatting yeah. uh, and, and surviving out there and building crazy. Like a lot of them are building these crazy buildings out of like pallet wood and stuff like that. Um, but they're surviving out there. Uh, uh, one interesting little sidebar. The uh, uh, if you've ever played Grand Theft Auto uh, five, the <laughs> desert area. Okay. This is the desert side of the map is the Salton Sea and um, the the towns that surround it. They have Salvation Mountain in the game. Um, they have uh, the their makeshift slab city out there. Uh, so all of this is in Grand Theft Auto five. Uh, so that's a which I've never played. Thing. It's rated M. <laughs> Yeah, if you swim to the bottom of it, there's a nuke. Uh, well, I actually think that if you swim to the bottom of it, there's a UFO. I don't remember, but there's something. Oh, is that real? It. Yeah. Well, no. At, is that a drop, drop of water? Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> ten your eye. Ooh, rough. Uh, <laughs> so there's been a lot of proposals on how to solve the problem. Okay. Uh, including my personal favorite of just building another lake that's a horseshoe that wraps around the top of the lake. <laughs> That they could use to feed it, and then what if, it out. What if? Uh, hear me out. What if we just, you know, did it again, <laughs> but around it? It's like a little. It's like a little water hug. <laughs> Have you seen the neck pillows? What if we just like put a gigantic a water lake neck, neck pillow? pillow? Yeah. So uh, here's the, that's how all of these solutions were received as like that's a really ridiculous idea. Or like, yeah, that's dumb. it's way too expensive. Like right. hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah. if not billions of dollars, to solve this problem. To do what? Right. Yeah. To to just make this less of an environmental. To concern. push this problem off to later. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Um, so uh, it, the closest it got to getting solved was they were going to build a series of canals out to the Gulf of California, so this could have an outflow, so that way it wouldn't. Book be just standing water basically. Yeah, um, and eventually over time it would all wash away, um, but that kind of helps solve that problem and then they could treat the land around it uh, and they were close to getting that It was a three hundred fifty million dollar proposal. They're close to getting that, but the proposal passed through it passed and they began construction in 2007, which then the Great Recession uh, and so it was never oh. finished. Um, so this is still the problem still hasn't been solved. Uh, nobody's actually ever been able to, to fix it and there's been multiple attempts since this, uh, but it just it hasn't been fixed. It's getting saltier and saltier. Um, fish are dying dead left and right. It's uh, <laughs> it is radioactive, like literally <laughs> radioactive um, uh, and to make matters even worse. Uh, this is sits right on top of the San Andreas fault uh, and it's 200 feet below sea level. So if <clears throat> the bomb goes off, well, here's it's what's right on top of that fault. Well, that is true. I haven't heard anybody say that, but that is that's true. I don't know if that would be a problem, but probably it would probably <laughs> probably be a problem. Uh, what's significant is they have like earthquake storms here where it's like just repetitive earthquakes because it's so close to the fault. Oh, yeah, so, like yeah. they have these bouts of earthquakes. They also have um, it is so close to the lava shelf that there's parts of it where it's so hot that the earth just turns into these mud volcanoes. They're like these gray mud volcanoes where they just like the mud boils over and just piles up and creates these things that look like Salvation Mountain, like multiple stories tall, just molten mud. Weirdest thing. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a weird place. Man. So and the water is five point two percent salt, right? Yeah, yeah so yeah. everyone there does have the salt life sticker on their car. <laughs> They take it super it's part of it's part of the it's part of it goes in with it. Yeah, you know, um, so yeah, so it's uh, it, it's it's drying up. Um, it's it's expected uh, by the year 3000 to be gone. They, they think it's going to completely evaporate, but that won't be we the least of the, the problems. Jonas brothers. <laughs> <laughs> They've been <laughs> we've been to, to the, the year 3000. Not much has changed except they, the salt and sea, but they live underwater 
and there's no nukes down here. <laughs> So they know that's they didn't mention a nuke in the song. They, they I feel like they would have said, said something if it was there. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, there's there are people campaigning trying to fix this, but it, even if it dries up, it's still a massive problem because now you have all that radioactive contaminated dust that's yeah. going to be blowing around that valley and then into uh, uh, the greater cities uh, across all of California and Arizona and Nevada and New Mexico and Mexico. Uh, it's it, it's going to become a pretty pretty major problem uh, if if something isn't done about it. But uh, what I love the most about this is that the uh, California Parks Department um, is attempting to revitalize the perception of the Salton Sea. Still smells like uh, uh, rotten eggs. It still smells still, bad, but still, honestly, still smells like rotten eggs. Still covered in dead fish. If you got COVID, but, and you can't smell. <laughs> but then it's great. Here's the thing: if you go to one of their park shelters uh, in the Salton Sea area today. There still will be an attendant there uh, and they will give you a tour uh, that ends with a film and the film <laughs> talks about the health benefits about bathing and in it's the like one of those sea. reels. It's <laughs> like a <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, but no, they literally talk about the the health benefits of bathing in the Salton Sea and how good it is for your skin, um, which is anybody with a brain would say I'm not getting in that water, <laughs> but they make all this reiteration about your I skin mean, will be well, thank glowing. you. Your skin will. <laughs> Your skin's gonna be glowing. Yeah, yeah. Are you tired pretty... of being pale? What <laughs> about the bright, green? <laughs> <laughs> bright green? Bright <laughs> green. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, this what was it like the in uh, where they would rub it on their teeth, right? Because it makes their teeth glow. Uh, I don't the, know what you're about. Um, when they were working Toothpaste. with like nuclear weapons. Oh. And they would uranium. They would, they would put stuff on their teeth. That's so weird. <laughs> I don't remember because it make it yeah. like glow in the dark. Kind of, yeah. It, it made them seem bright and stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. That's nuts. Um, little known trivia: uh, This was actually a contributing factor to the construction of the Hoover Dam because uh, it slowed the flow of water into the Salton Sea because they wanted it to evaporate originally. Um, the Hoover Dam was really built for power and to reroute the Colorado somewhere else, um, but. Uh, this was a contributing factor. They said, "Hey, this would help with that problem as well." Uh, uh, so that's that's part of why the Hoover Dam was there. Um, but yeah, so the Salton Sea, one of the craziest places ever, because you know it's a nuclear test site, a tourist trap, and a sea that's literally falling apart. Um, and it's the fifth time this has happened that it's it's grown and evaporated um, over the past thir- thirteen hundred years. In this history. just keeps happening yeah. in history. This is just the first time that we did it, and then we made it way worse. Uh, <laughs> we were like, that's a problem that keeps happening. But we, what you know, if we what if we made it a lot worse? Hmm. That's I mean, I feel like that's how American <laughs> government walks into everything. Like, yeah, things are pretty bad here. It would be a shame if something happened. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a shame if it was way worse than It'd that. Be a shame if something, you know, we just ruined it more. <laughs> we could make this worse. That's kind of how it goes, though. It's like this is already bad. I mean, how you know, I mean, you know, we're not hurting it. We're not. Yeah, we're just making it a little uh, more interesting. You know, that is interesting. Yeah, so uh, and that's connected to Slab City. Yeah, it's right next to Slab City. It's uh, it's all in the same area. This, uh, I mean, it's in the same desert that Burning Man and Coachella happen at. So, I mean, if you ever smell rotten eggs at Burning Man or Coachella, it's the lake. Wow. Yeah. So. Uh, Yikes. That's uh the Salton Sea, man. Wow. Yeah. And I, that that bomb's not going to explode. Why not? Well, I'm just thinking that if it did, like th- all the stuff is so, like worn down and everything. Yeah. All it would do is. And you would just hear. You'd hear fiddle anyway. Okay. It's a fiddle off. It's a fiddle off. Hey, thanks so much for watching things I learned last night. If you like that, there are more episodes you can watch, or you can watch some highlights. But please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode in the future. Yeah.